So if you watched my Book is Resolutions video, you will know that one of my goals for the new year is to do more book reviews. And I just finished Winter Spell by Claire Legrand this morning at like 2 o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to review it. I kind of figured out through the process that the reason why I haven't been filming a lot of reviews is because I end up reading a book and then I dive right into another one and then I kind of start getting absorbed into that story and I kind of forget my thoughts and feelings of a book. Unless I write something down right away or I film it right away, I'm pretty much not going to go back and do it. So this morning when I woke up, like I said, I finished it at like 2 o'clock in the morning. So this morning when I woke up about 7.30ish, I logged into Goodreads, I rated the book, I wrote a review, and now I am filming it for you. So if you're interested in my review, it does contain spoilers of Winter Spell. Stay tuned. Hi friends, it's Gwen. Today I'm going to be reviewing Winter Spell by Claire Legrand. I just finished this book at 2 o'clock in the morning and I was super pumped to be done with it. I heard about this book like I was hearing through Twitter and Tumblr and just online in general and booktube. I was hearing that this was like a loose retelling of The Nutcracker and I was super excited and super pumped about it because obviously December and I wanted to try to read Christmassy type books, um, winter, you know, set in winter, that type of thing. And so there were a whole bunch of contests going on to um, win the book and I was trying to win the book and I didn't do that and then finally I just broke down and I went to Barnes and Noble and when I was looking what I was gonna buy picked it up I really wanted to love this book there was a thing going on that if you sent a copy of your receipt then you got like a signed book plate to put in your book or something or I don't know something like that but I didn't have my receipt so I was super bummed about that but the book is absolutely gorgeous. The idea behind the book is amazing. And yeah, so let's get into my thoughts. The first thing I wanted to say is, is when I started it, I had that voice in the back of my head that this was a loose retelling of The Nutcracker. And if you think that going in, I think you're going to be really disappointed. I know I was. It's been a while since I've seen The Nutcracker and I've never like seen it live or anything like that. But it was just absolutely nothing that I remembered from the Nutcracker. Now, I know some of the names are used, and there are the mice or the lokes or whatever. Um, but, yeah, and the prince. But the storyline has really nothing to do with it. It's more of a dark, mysterious, undertone kind of thing. Like, I don't think I had the right frame of mind going into the book um, as far as the Nutcracker. Now... I will be completely honest in saying the first 156 pages or 155 pages, I really wanted to stop this book so many times. Those first pages, it was so annoying. Of course, the main character, Clara, <clears throat> is kind of, I don't know, she's annoyingly weak and there's the Miss Plum and Dr. Victor and... They're annoying, and they do things that aren't right, but Clara doesn't tell her father, and I'm like, why not? I think he would believe you. I think he would do something about it. Like, it was just so annoying, and it was set in, like, 1800s in New York, and that that didn't even seem necessary to me, really. It seemed kind of off. And I just, I really was not liking it. And if you've seen my review of Blacklight, I had a lot of those same feelings. I was just, I was not into it. I was forcing myself to read it. Usually at night before bed, I'll read a chapter or a couple of chapters. I couldn't even get through a chapter sometimes. I would read like one or two pages and just go to bed because it was just that hard. I was, the story was not drawing me in. The characters were not drawing me in. The plot was not drawing, nothing about the story was intriguing to me. I was shocked that I've heard so many people rave about it. And then I wasn't enjoying it. I felt like I was missing something. I contemplated several times about just putting the book down and moving on to something else. I picked up an arc that an author sent me and I started reading it and I kept wanting to go back. I said, no, there has to be something amazing about this book. And I was flipping through Goodreads at the ratings, ratings that people have written and 
basically, for the majority, the book either got a five or it got a one or two. Um, and to me, that just said you either loved it or hated it. And, and for the first 155 pages, I was hating it. Um, but on page 156, when um, the prince and Clara are um, rescuing a girl who's being abused, Bo, Bo, who was kind of being abused or like taken advantage of by these guys, and they go to rescue her, right there it picked up, and I started flying through this book in huge chunks. I would read 50 pages, 100 pages. Okay, I got to go do this, and I'd go do that, and then I go back and I read another 50 pages. So at that point, I started flying through the book. It kept me intrigued. I was super excited. I was like, oh, this is what people are talking about. Um, the characters were okay. Um, you really got a sense of what they looked like, what they thought, what they felt, how, you know, how they fit into the world, but you didn't really love them. I pretty much hated all of them. So yeah. And then the plot was kind of all over the place. There were too many plot lines that didn't flow together very well. The setting, even though there is this gorgeous map in the front of the book. I still felt that either the author relied heavily, like knowing that the map was there, because the world wasn't really, I without the map, I could not have pictured the way this world was set up. But being able to refer to the map, I was like, okay, that's the part that we're talking about. And oh, okay. But then there were parts on the map that weren't even covered or weren't even talked about in this book so I'm wondering if there's going to be another book I really hope not because I don't want to dive into another series and if it's anything like this one I really don't want to struggle through the beginning so hard as I did in this one so I don't know um so the setting I gave a three just because New York it kind of seemed pointless I hated those parts and then once Clara got to Kane um, it was very hard picturing the world and just visualizing everything. So, and I know there was a lot of description and sometimes there was just too much description and it just, it just muddled everything else. Um, the conflict of her father being taken to Cain and her trying to find her father, it seems like they were going down that path to find her father and then something else you know, got in the way. So there were all these adventures and conflicts along the way. And the resolution in the book, I will say, was, you know, it was decent. Um, I wish that the book would have stopped on page 426, which is just 26 pages shy of the actual end of the book. Um, to me, it just seemed like end scene. Like, I just felt like the book was over. I felt that if they would have left it there, it was enough build up so that as a reader, you kind of knew what was going to happen. And I felt that the last 26 pages, of course, Clara goes back to New York. I just felt like, here we are again in New York, and I don't like these parts. And it felt like she, the author felt like she had to spell it out for us what happened, and I felt like those parts were unnecessary. But at the same time, I understood that she wanted to, okay, this is the actual ending of the book, so readers weren't like, oh, but what if this happened? No, what if this happened? Like, no, this is really what happened. So I kind of understood, but at the same time, I would have just appreciated if we would have stopped the book on 426. Rating the book three stars, and I did my usual five-story element breakdown. I gave the characters a four, the plot a three, the setting a three, the conflict a three, and the resolution a four. It ended up being like a 3.4, but I just rounded it down to a three because honestly, the first part of the book was so hard to get through that it almost spoiled the whole thing because I literally almost put this book down four or five times, but I kept plugging away. My cat is chasing his ball. So if you hear weird scratching, that's my cat. Anyway, so I ended up rating it three stars, which I feel is kind of fitting because the first 155 pages, more than a quarter of the book, was very, very, very hard to get through. And then the last 26 pages, so it was like the beginning and the ending were 
a one to me. But then that middle part was really good, probably like a four, I would say. So I feel a three is fair. The song that Nicholas sings to Bo to let her know that he is the prince, that was really cool. Uh, and then when Clara, it says, your mother was a mage, her blood runs in your veins. You have magic in you, Clara, and Cain is waking it up. I thought, oh wow, she has magic in her. Let me find out more about that. And I really liked the bonding part of Nicholas and Clara while it was very annoying. One minute she was like, I love him. And then the next minute she was like, I hate him. And then I love him. And then I hate him. I mean, I understood why she went from love to hate, love to hate, love to hate. But it was just so much back and forth. But um, when they finally did the bonding ceremony, to symbolize the complete trust one has in one's bonding partner. And that whole ritual was very... I don't know, it was very sensual and very interesting and I really enjoyed the bonding ceremony. So yeah, thumbs up for me on the bonding ceremony. But yeah, um, overall, not too impressed. Um, I don't think you're missing anything if you do not read the book, but it does have a few story plots, little things like the bonding ceremony I thought was very unique. Um, yeah, so there are some great things in this book, but I think there's a lot more wrong with it than there is right with it. Those are my thoughts for Winter Spell by Claire Legrand. I'm sorry I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I really did want to love this book. If you've read this book in the comments below and what you thought of it, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye!